Good morning, good morning. How are you? I hope you're well. There are two ways I could go to work. One is, uh, you know, the straighter, faster main roads. And the other way is uh, the back roads. What I call the back roads, just like most people, I live at, um, I don't have a road that goes directly to the surgery. It's like a, it's like a square. And I live on one corner and the surgery's done the diametrically opposite square corner. And so I can either go down two sides of the square or the other two sides of the square. So, I tend to go down the uh, more rural sides. And that's because when the traffic was really bad, it used to get me much closer to the surgery and then the slow part was much shorter. Um, but now there doesn't seem to be much traffic around. Uh, when I got out of work, normally, if I left at, say, five o'clock, half past five, I'm very, very close to a major shopping centre, a place called Westwood Cross. And uh, I used to get um, embroiled in traffic, you know, we know, you know you used to spend a good ten minutes getting in traffic, as all the, uh, everyone who finished at five went home as soon as they finished. And now I can come out at five o'clock and no problem, no traffic at all. I've got a new phone, I've got a Pixel 4a, which is, uh, I used to have a Pixel 2. I like uh, Pixels, they're Google's own brand. And they don't really sell much compared to something like an iPhone or a Samsung. But they are um, first in line for anything that Google does, including the new operating systems, etc. So. Uh, and I'm, I'm a bit of a Google fanboy. I do use all Google stuff. Gmail is obviously the best, I would say, the best email. And uh, I got embroiled with a guy the other day in an argument about uh, macroeconomics, which, as you may know, is uh, a secondary interest of mine. But it's very close to becoming a primary interest. Um, and uh, we, we were discussing. Uh, don't laugh me, I can't remember what we were discussing. Where was I going with that? Oh, yes, 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 Gmail. And we were discussing a uh, first uh, mover advantage of uh, cryptocurrencies like uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash and uh, Dash and basically I I said that uh, you know Bitcoin was uh, valuable because it was useful and scarce but one of the arguments to the contrary is that it's uh, easily reproducible because it's an open source uh, project so anyone could just copy the code and, and reproduce it exactly um, but the reason why that doesn't work is that you get uh, what they call first mover advantage, which is where the first person that does something tends to get entrenched and, and gets most of the benefit and, it, and becomes difficult to dislodge, even, even if you can copy it exactly. So, um, and it's an interesting point because he wrote back and said that, um, you know, I said if, if Bitcoin uh, is so easy to copy and so... Um, uh, you know, has no value as a result, then why don't you copy Facebook or why don't you copy Google or uh, uh, Amazon, you know? And he wrote back to me, you know, and I, we had this, he's a professor of something. He's in, I think he's in Argentina or Venezuela or somewhere. And, um, Obviously, he's a dyed-in-the-wool uh, socialist and collectivist, so we don't uh, agree on much. But he said that uh, actually Facebook wasn't the first. You know, there was this thing called MySpace that came before Facebook. But 
that was, you know, it's a bit like arguing with a child in that you're, you know, if, if uh, the child says to me, like, you know, you, you touched me on the head and you say, I can't, I can't have touched you on the head. I'm standing 10 feet away from you. And the child then says, actually, you're standing 11 feet away from me and thinks it's won the argument, you know, because <laughs> 11 is correct and, and 10 isn't. <coughs> so, so, you know, I had to point out to him that MySpace was a bit of a dumpster fire in terms of a code and functionality and it had a reasonably good user interface and a lot of marketing and was the first of its kind, correct, but it wasn't the first one that attracted a mass audience and worked really well. And that's why Facebook has stuck, because first Facebook was the first one to do it properly. <coughs> Excuse me. And so, um, in the same way, uh, Bitcoin wasn't necessarily the first attempt at digital currency. There were plenty of others. There was e-money and uh, Wai why Dai, why die, whatever his name was, and Adam Back and... Anyway, lots of other people uh, had, had a go at trying to create digital money because it's a, it was a familiar concept. It was like um, the uh, iPlayer, the, uh, the, the uh, thing that played cassettes, um, CDs, that fitted in your pocket. I forget the uh, Sony, I forget what it was called now. But anyway, we knew that it was possible to put a hard drive in your pocket and store songs on it, um, but <clears throat> nobody really put the R&D into sorting out <clears throat> how to put it all together in a package with the, a reasonable battery and all the electronics and everything. Uh, so, <clears throat> but then Apple, Apple did it and then they became like the first mover in that space. There's a van there with blue lights all over it. So, regressing, as I always do, use uh, <laughs> multiple regression in arguments. So, <clears throat> I had to explain that uh, you know both Bitcoin and Facebook weren't you couldn't, you couldn't simply copy them because although okay yes technically they both had been the first um, in in attempt in the field, they were the first successful um, generally adopted service that you know of a high standard and that tends to be the case if you do something that's new and it's something that's for which there's a market and uh, you're good at what you do then you, you make a ton of money it's not a problem with that now gmail became um, my email uh, of choice because they were the first really to deal with effectively with the problem of spam and unwanted emails and if you had a gmail address then sort of antivirus protection and uh, anti-spam protection that came with it was was really good I mean in contrast something like Yahoo Yahoo was 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 properly hacked from day one if anyone who got an a Yahoo address uh, was was being contacted by spam emails like within 24 hours of of registering it and that was because Yahoo was so completely infiltrated that uh, people had uh, their hooks into the system so badly that they it was almost like they were notified as soon as someone went on there so that they could um, spam them and of course that greatly damaged Yahoo and uh, and very few people now are on a Yahoo who went from being absolutely massive to zero because um, and I think the thing is that you can also you can tell a lot about people from their email address um, and we use this we well, I don't want to say we use it but I mean we you know, it's interesting when the patients we always get the email address off the patient and say uh, <clears throat> say they've got a Gmail address, then we know they're, we sort of think, oh, well, they're fairly 
sensible, you know, they've probably, they've made a wise decision, they've, either, I mean, they may have done it completely at random, but I mean, you know, and also there may be an element of, like, self and non-self, we might say, oh yeah, uh, we, we made that decision, and they made their decision, therefore, we're, we're sensible, therefore they are, but, um, occasionally, uh, obviously you get other people with other email addresses, and so the main ones are, Uh, iCloud in which case you know that they are totally reliant on the Apple infrastructure and, and that's interesting because I always said you know wh why did Apple become so successful why is Apple able to charge so much for its hardware uh, because Apple is a hardware company it certainly, certainly was anyway, and uh, you know, and and so much so that they gave the operating system away free. So if you bought an iMac uh, and they brought out an, an upgrade to the operating system, then you just downloaded it and, it and it updated it. Whereas in contrast to Windows, which was a software company um, and didn't really sell PCs, and so of course if you wanted, to, if they brought out a new operating system, then you had to. Uh, either upgrade, pay to upgrade, or um, more likely you waited until you bought a new PC and it came included with a new PC. But only only recently have they decided to adopt the uh, iMac model of uh, allowing you to upgrade your operating system um, free of charge. But Apple became uh, massive because they're a generation of people who couldn't cope with computers. Uh, they, they just their mentality was not such that it, it fitted well with their problem-solving abilities. And and certainly in the early days of computers, I mean, you had to be a pretty pretty dedicated problem solver. You know, if the if the printer wouldn't work or the Wi-Fi wouldn't work, or the scanner wouldn't work, and uh, I, had a, I still have a friend called Alec Lupin, who was a generation above me, and he used to just say to me, Derek, you know, I don't understand this. I don't. Why can't these computers just work like toasters? You know, I, I want a, I want a piece of toast. I, I get a piece of bread. It's BMW. I think some sort of Mercedes you know and I put the bread in the toast and I push a button and then two minutes later I've got a slice of toast he says that's that's what I want I want a computer that works like that but the problem was that uh, computers still don't work like that you know they still don't work like that you have a computer you put a disk drive in it or a motherboard or then you've got different amounts of memory made by different manufacturers and then chuck in a CD drive and uh, a network card, a graphics card of your choice and already you've got like 2 times 2 times, well it's more than that, it's probably, it's probably 256 times 256 times 256 permutations of, of the setup of that computer. And the operating system has to be able to cope with absolutely any combination, you know, which is a Herculean task. There's, there's probably an infinite way, number of ways you could configure a PC, a Windows-based PC. Uh, and so what iMac did was they just dumbed everything down and made it toaster-like. And, and like it or not, a large a large and a very large proportion of the population is um, that is what is best for them you know they don't want to be in the early days of figuring about with them trying to find an interrupt uh, line to get a, to get a printer working So, a little 
the same with um, you know with Bitcoin. Uh, <clears throat> there's a saying that you know with, with Bitcoin, it's control of the money is controlled by the keys. You have a digital signature, which is what they call your private key. And if you've got control of the private key, then you can move the money. So it's a bit like having a numbered Swiss bank account where there's a sort of a password and uh, providing you go to the correct Swiss bank and you know the number of the account and the password, then, then you can move the money. Um, <clears throat> so there's a saying, not your key, not your coins. Uh, the idea being that if you use a custodial service, then you're not in charge of your money. It's their money on which you have a claim, which is very similar to the way it works in banks. So, for example, we've got a positive balance in our bank account of five figures, not high five, low five figures. And um, when I say we've got that balance, well, I don't have that balance. That is the bank's money. The bank owns that money. People don't realise this, but in legally, that is the bank owns that money. It's the bank's money. I have a claim on it, and in fact, I don't really have much of a claim on it <laughs> because should the bank go bust, I am at the end of a long list of creditors. They would, they would put me right on the end. Uh, where you know after the inland revenue has their cut and the uh, the, the prefer prefer preferred creditors have their cut and uh, the bank has its cut you know their their bankers have their cut or whatever then if there's any money left over after the lawyers have had it then but that's why they brought out the deposit insurance scheme which I think is up to eighty thousand pounds which basically says that um, <clears throat> if you are stiffed by a bank, uh, you can uh, you can get back up to eighty thousand pounds with each depository institution. Which you know, which means if you've got three accounts, I've got eighty thousand in, then two of them aren't covered. Just one is. It's one per bank. It encourages you to spread out the loss. And. Um, but what the government would do would they would just print that money, so and in, in, and and debase the any money that you already had, you know, reduce the spending power of your existing money, including the money that they're going to refund you by just printing the money and just giving it back to you. Um, so the bank would get to keep the money, and then you'd get get to get the money as well. So you know that's just the way it works. And, uh, or the way they make it work. But um, no, when we look at patients, and, oh, also, I mean, the other the other thing is that there's not much uh, hope that should there be a general default. In other words, if there was a, a general collapse of the banks, like there was in Cyprus, for example. Then um, there wouldn't there wouldn't be enough money in the scheme to cover it anyway. I mean, it's designed to cover one bank or possibly two banks going bust. Uh, it's not designed to cover all the banks going bust. And if all the banks could couldn't uh, uh, you know the customers of all the banks couldn't redeem all their money out of the deposit scheme, there, there just isn't enough money available unless they decided to put the um, digital printing presses into overdrive but so that's how you know uh, someone who's got an iCloud address has got a pretty simple you know they can't cope with anything more complicated than a toaster type mentality that tells you a bit about them and then obviously if they've got a Yahoo then they're 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 a lost cause you know they just anyone who's still got a Yahoo com address is just uh, basically just doesn't know how to change their email address and then you've got a few who've got Sky um, and Sky is a bundled package you know if you've got Sky uh, TV 
then they very quickly try and sell you Sky Broadband. And I, so I suppose uh, if the broadband is in your area and it's competitive, then that's possible. But well, where I am, the broadband, uh, it's, all the broadband is hopeless, including the, the Sky Broadband. So we don't bother. But Sky people have got a like, um, inclusive type mentality, I would say. So they might be more interested in a, a third party capitation plan. Uh, these are the people who've got, you know, they're members of the AA. They've got insurance on their boilers. They've got insurance on their external pipes from the water board. Uh, they've got everything from Sky and they might want a scheme where everything's included on the dentistry side. So, yeah, so, new phone. So, Bitcoin first mover. Google, Gmail, works well. The reason why I picked the 4A just to wind up is because um, it's got a headphone jack. So it's got a 3.5mm headphone jack. And Apple pioneered uh, getting rid of the 3.5mm headphone jack. And the reason was that um, Apple users, right? <laughs> are very good at dropping their phones in water. They're out on the beach or they bend over and flush the toilet and their phone goes down the toilet or they drop it in the washing up or something. And Apple were getting very fed up, I think, with people coming back and saying, my phone has stopped working, I don't know why. And so what they did was they put inside every phone a strip which change colour when it's exposed to water. And so what they would do is they would open up the phone and then they would say, this phone's been dropped in some water. <laughs> and, and the customer would say, no. And they would go, yes. <laughs> so what they tried to do was they tried to um, make a phone that was basically waterproof. And in order to do that, they had to bung up all the holes, including the three and a half millimeter headphone jack so they had a Bluetooth capability even though the audio quality of anything that's played over Bluetooth is rubbish so they made a big virtue of bringing out Bluetooth headphones and everybody had to buy Bluetooth earbuds and stuff like that um, they never mentioned the fact that it was done mainly just to improve the water resistance and cut down on the number of repairs that they had to do and uh, for me, that was a big inconvenience because I can't uh, I can't be fiddling about with adapters that uh, fit my headphones, wired headphones, and also I can't you, know, you can't sleep in uh, wireless earbuds. So occasionally, when I'm listening and I'm in bed, I listen through the wired earbuds, and um, <clears throat> they have to plug into something. So the last phone that had the jack was the Pixel 2, then they brought out the Pixel 3, and then they brought out the Pixel 4, and then with no with no jack, and then, you know, just to try and copy Apple. And then finally, finally, they got the message and put the jack back in. And so now they've 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 got my money. Which is fine. Here I am, two minutes early as usual. believe in getting to work too early. I think that's the patient waiting in the car, so I better run. Nice to see you. Talk to you later. Bye.